clip, we're looking at the Baroque instrumental genres of concerto and concerto grosso. Um, and so let's go straight into it. What is a concerto? Some say it is from the Latin word concert de terre, which means to work harmoniously, as in to work in concert. And then others say, well, it's also, it also is from the Latin root word of contentio, meaning to conflict. And actually, it is a bit of both. There's a bit of working together and a bit of working in conflict, and we'll look at how that works. So, still, what is it? A concerto is a soloist, of, um, or a group of soloists, if it's a concerto grosso, playing with a larger group, such as the orchestra. So usually, if you hear an instrumental soloist with orchestra, it is a concerto. Now, if there is a vocal soloist with orchestra, it is not a concerto. Concerto is only about instrumentalists because if it were a vocalist, it would probably be an aria or something like that. So a concerto is instrumental and it's a solo instrumentalist plus orchestra. You can see here the bassoonist is standing up in front. You've got the full orchestra behind them. Um, so they're supposed to stand out from the orchestra. And so when we, t how that fits in with this, uh, those Italian root words is that sometimes your orchestra plays and um, orchestra and soloists play together, and sometimes the soloist is in opposition to the orchestra, or pops out in a solo section. We'll look into that some more in a minute. So a concerto grosso is a large a concerto where we have lots of soloists. Um, you can see here you've got four violinists standing up in front of an, an orchestra here. They're probably playing the Vivaldi four violin concerto. So um, that would be a concerto grosso. The Bach double concerto for two violins is a concerto grosso. It's when you have more than one instrumental soloist um, together. Now, usually a concerto is in three movements, and they're fast, slow, and then fast. Um, and we'll go more into that during the uh, classical period. But um, it is a genre that is shows off a solo instrumental soloist plus orchestra. So. Who is the one that invented the, the concerto? Because it came of being in the Baroque era. The Baroque era is when instrumental music really came into its own. So we're going to look briefly at the um, Italian composer Antonio Vivaldi. Now, he's originally from Venice um, and became uh, made his mark there in Venice. He did go other places, but he's known primarily for his concertos because he wrote over 500 of them. And he's the one that took the genre and codified it and said, here's how it's going to work. Notice that he also wrote some operas because at that time, if you didn't write an opera, you weren't a real composer. He's also known as the Red Priest because um, I think he probably had red hair. He was uh, rather temperamental um, and he only did what he wanted to do. And uh, there came a point where he was saying mass and got tired of saying mass and just quit and didn't and went off to write music. So um, because he was really good at writing music, they kind of just put up with him and told him, decided he didn't have to say mass after that. Um, he became a, um, the master of violin at an orphanage uh, that had an all and um, and be, grew basically developed a very famous all girl orchestra. And you can go more into detail on that. It's a really interesting story for those of you who um, are curious about history. These were often the unwanted children um, of Venice, and um, but they became brilliant musicians and they always played behind a screen because some of them had physical deformities, maybe they'd had pox, maybe they'd had um, injuries or deformities because of whatever birth deformities or whatever else, but they were wonderful musicians and people came from far and wide to listen to them perform. And so Vivaldi had this fabulous built-in house orchestra that he could write for and with these really virtuosic musicians. And so he created um, the concerto as a means to show off some of these fabulous instrumentalists. He also spent time as a court impresario and opera impresario and court composer because these are jobs that um, musicians held during the time. Um, what he did for the concerto, though, however, was create a standard formula of three movements, fast, slow, fast, and then he created this idea of the ritornello form. Now, what in the world is ritornello? Um, basically, the ritornello form starts with a, th uh, a several themes put together and the orchestra is going to play this main theme that can be broken into smaller pieces and this main theme is called the ritornello and or the refrain and we're going to hear that ritornello come back lots of times not always fully sometimes it's just a, a small snippet but whenever the orchestra plays they're going to play um material borrowed from the ritornello and so 
after the open, opening ritornello played by the orchestra, the soloist is going to play something new. And that soloist can be, that material can come from the ritornello or it can be new material. And then the orchestra plays part of the ritornello. Usually it's only just a part, not all of it. And we call that the tutti section. And then we're going to go back to a solo section because the soloist is going to do their own thing. It's kind of being in opposition to the orchestra. And when the orchestra comes in and plays the ritornello section, the soloist usually plays along with them. So that's the contentio versus concorditer, the two Italian sides of the word concerto. And so it, you, you have this back and forth of the ritornello versus the solo back and forth and back and forth until at the end, um, the, the Vivaldi usually um, has the orchestra state most of the full ritornello again. So what I want you to listen for in the um, the concerto that we're going to ha I'm going to have you learn is the repetition. So where does the ritornello come back, and can you hear when the orchestra plays the two D sections, or when you don't hear the soloists by themselves? Can you hear that the orchestra is playing parts of that opening ritornello? And so you're going to hear this opening ritornello referred to every time the orchestra comes back in. So probably the most famous piece that Vivaldi wrote is the spring from his series of four concertos for violin um, called The Four Seasons. And it's from his Opus 8. It's the eighth, eighth thing he published, and it's number one in his Opus 8. And, and um, the reason they're called The Four Seasons is because he used, is, used a couple of poems for each season to um, as reference in guiding him when he wrote this work. Um, and so the spring talks about the, how wonderful spring is, and you can look it up on Wikipedia. There's a lot of good um, description there. But it is a, the melodic line is played by a solo violin and the first violins. And so the, the solo violin will join the first violins in the ritornello section and then pop out and play by themselves later. It's based on harmony, and it uses basso continuo as its basis. So you're going to hear harpsichord, and you're going to hear a strong bass line and know that the harpsichord is actually improvising the chords. So here is, I'm, we're going to, I just want to play a little bit of the first movement for you so you know what we're, um, where, what the spring is. And the first movement is the most famous, but the last movement has the clearest ritornello form. So here's the first movement first. <laughs> You can hear the harpsichord and you can hear the violins with this lovely theme. So I'm not going to play um, the whole, any more of the first movement. You, I want you guys to go listen to it because it's really phenomenal. But I want you to play, I mean, we'll play the last movement because the last movement shows off the ritornello idea really well. So here it is, the last movement of the spring from Four Seasons. So here's the ritornello. It's the 2D section when everybody plays. You can hear a recording instrument like a guitar and a strong bass. So the boss will continue as evident. And here's the solo violin playing something different. You can hear the cello underneath it. Cello and harpsichord together make the basso continuo. So this is typically in the solo sections. The soloist just has basso continuo under it. Oh, ritornello. We've heard this idea before. soloist has popped out again with something new and is accompanied by the basso continuum, harpsichord, and bass.
In this case, he was actually accompanied by the violins. And now we're getting ready for another Ritornello, and here we go, and... I believe we've heard this tune before. Yet another repetition. Ooh, something interesting for the cellos to and the harpsichord. The basso continuo. Well. to Ritornello again. So that's the last movement of uh, the spring from the Four Seasons. Um, and hopefully you are able to hear, begin to hear there the idea of the Ritornello form, where the orchestra has a main idea, a main theme, if you will, and um, it alternates with the soloist doing their own thing. And, and every time the orchestra comes back, they're going to play that Ritornello idea, that main theme idea. So that keeps coming back over and over. And so we get this is one way that the Baroque composer uses this idea of repetition and contrast. The soloist is the contrast and the orchestra, orchestra parts, um, the original Ritonella parts are primarily repetition or a little bit of variation on that repetition. Okay, and there you have the concerto.